Back again with another video on the uh, ATEM software control. This time we're going to be looking at downstream key. Uh, so in order to demonstrate downstream key we need some material in the foreground. So I'm going to put up camera 4 again, as we did before. So camera 4, there's camera 4. And um, I'm just going to leave it on camera 4. We don't need to have transitions or anything at this point. Just need something in the background that we can put our key over. And as you can see on the palette menu on the right hand side Second, up, second option from the bottom is downstream keys. So I'm going to click on that and it opens it up. Uh, DSK1 and DSK2. We're just going to play with DSK1 for now. And it's asking me, OK, what's the rate I want to set that to? So I can change my rate. Let's make it one second. I'm typing it in. So it's now one second. You see that's changed to one second. Uh, what is the fill source? So you can have different fill sources and different key sources. Normally it's from the same place. If you have a graphic brought in from outside and it's got an alpha channel or a key channel, uh, it would normally come from the same place. So if it's on Media Player 2, your key would normally come from Media Player 2. So you can play around with those things, but we're going to keep it nice and simple. So in this case, my fill source is Media Player 2 at the moment. I'm going to, just because I feel like it, I'm going to make it Media Player 4 because I have a different graphic on Media Player 4. And you see the key has changed also to Media Player 4's key. OK. Oops. Yeah. Just funny things happening with the displays in the background. So I've got Media Player 4's key. And that's all you need to do to set up the downstream key here. So I can minimize that again. And if I want to kick in the downstream key, all I need to do is just cut downstream key on air, I believe. No, let's try the auto. OK, there it was. So if I hold that there, and I'll turn it off. So that's doing your auto fade over one second. OK. And you can click the on air button down here. If I pull that, you can probably get an idea. If, if you can see program, if you can see the program monitor here. I just kink it just a little bit. That's a bit better. So the on air button is the cut button. DS downstream key cut in, cut out. And the auto button. There you can see the actual clock counting as it's doing its work. Okay. Now we also talked about downstream downstream key tie earlier on, where you can tie the DSK to a source on the preview monitor so that when you cut the cut that source in, preview to program, it brings the downstream key with it. So let's go back to the preview monitor. Let's put something on that. Let's say Media Player 1. OK, so you can see that's on the preview monitor. And I'm going to put my downstream key tie in as well. So I'm going to click on that here. And there it is. You can see the downstream key is on the preview monitor now, up there. Oops, big fingers, small camera. Uh, there it is, on there. I, don't want to make, I want to make sure I don't push too many buttons. Uh, so as you can see, by taking the main transition button cut or cut or auto here I can bring the downstream key with whatever happens to be on the preview bus at the time so in this case the uh, media player one the NLE logo and the downstream key comes across also when it's on the preview you can change your downstream key so it comes from a different source so for example I'm going to say media player three Okay, and the key comes from Media Player 3 as well. So when I, you see on the preview, it should be a different graphic. Yes, it is. I know you wouldn't normally do this, but just to show you that it can happen, there you go. You wouldn't normally do it live on the program output, but you can switch between them on the menu while it's still up there. So there we go, I'm going to cut that away. And that's it for downstream key. Thank <laughs> you.